So with that, we see how to, how to solve a problem given the strains, infinitesimal strains, obtain the displacements. Okay, and now we do an example. Another problem that is worth uh, considering is the following. We just dealt in last days about the concept of the strain rates. And we defined a strain the strain rate tensor, D, which was the symmetric gradient of the velocity field, a spatial gradient of the velocity field. And, of course, we also introduced another, back, another tensor, which is W, which we call the rotation velocity tensor, or the spin tensor, which was the skew-symmetric gradient of the velocity field. From this, we could extract the actual vector of this, which was called the vorticity tensor, which is one half of rotational of B. So let's com compare that with what we have for infinitesimal strains. Instead of, uh, uh, instead of, uh, of displacements, now we have velocities. In half of strains, now we have the rate of the strains, which have the same expression then, uh, in terms of the velocity here, then the strains have in terms of the displacements here. And also, we have the vorticity, the, the spin tensor, which has the same, the same expression in terms of the velocity than the rotation tensor had here. And finally, we have the vorticity tensor, omega, which has the same expression than the rotation tensor in terms of u. So look, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between these vectors. So what about if I'm given, instead of a strain field, I'm given a rate of a strain field? What would be the procedure to obtain the velocity field? Just make the translation. The, the, the translation. So instead of thinking of that, I would go to the formulas. I will go to those formulas, and instead of placing here E, I would have to consider what? D. Instead of considering here theta, I would have to consider omega. Instead of considering here U, I would have to consider V. So I don't need any other formula. I need just to see that if I am dealing with velocities, instead of strains, I have to deal with strain fields, strain rates, this. Instead of thetas, I have to deal with vorticity vectors omega components. And instead of displacements, I have to deal with velocities. There is no specific formula for that. We try to save the space. So just, you should know this. And now, at this point, we, you should be able to solve the problem of given a compatible a strain rate tensor fulfilling the compatibility equations. What compatibility equations, by the way? Well, those ones here, those ones here. The only difference is that in terms of epsilon, there would appear this here, but everything is, is the same. There is a one-to-one -one correspondence, okay? So a one compatible equations, a one-D compatibility equ compatible problem uh, should be integrated in just in case that uh, the strain rate compatible problem is given and the, instead of the displacement, the corresponding, uh, the corresponding velocities are given. And again, the solution will consist of a rigid body velocity field plus a strain rate field. Okay? So, that's it. That's it. Now, we should be able to solve that problem, for instance. Look, there we are in this case. We are given a strain rate field tensor, which is that one. Look, it depends on the space in terms of y, and it depends on time too. Okay? Look, we are given to obtain, we are requested to obtain the velocity field from that. The velocity field. Hmm? You have to go to the corresponding um, sorry, the corresponding uh, equations, but now do the translation 
of d instead of epsilon, u instead of b instead of u, and omega instead of theta in these equations. Okay? Look, we know also that when, while integrating that, there will appear some constants that have to be solved by some boundary conditions, some conditions. Look, these are the conditions. It said that at point 111, the resulting velocity field takes the value 2 et, et, et. So here you see the time appears. But the space, since it's fixed, then there's no space here. And then also, it's given that the vorticity at the same point could be another point. But in this case, at the same point, takes the value 0, 0 minus t, t. So they are given conditions for determining the constants appearing in integration. OK? So we consider that correspondence. OK? And then we just have to go to the two steps. First, obtaining the rotation velocity, the vorticity in that case. OK? So we have to go to the formula. And in this formula, we see, in this formula, we see that formula up here. Derivative of theta 1, well, omega 1 with respect to x1, which is x, is equal to derivative one, epsilon 1, 3. Well, epsilon 1, 3 is epsilon xz. This kind of translations of just can be, uh, changing from this notation to that, that's something that you are supposed to do immediately. Okay? So look at that. Then the problem says you have the formula at one at b besides zero, and then that would be the derivative of dxz with respect to y minus dxy with respect to z. Look, dxz is just uh, zero because is that the xz is zero. So all dxz's will be zero. And dxy, dxy, which is that one, only depends on y. So derivative with respect to z is zero. So that first equation says derivative of omega 1 with respect to x is zero minus zero, that is zero. The second, derivative of omega 1 with respect to y is that dyz, dyz is that zero. dyy is that zero, so that is zero. And the third one, derivative of omega 1 with respect to z is dzz with respect to y. Well, dzz is not zero, but it doesn't depend on y, so it's zero. And dzy, dzy is that, is zero, so it's zero. So, like, look, quite easy. We have to find a function, omega 1, which is a function of x, y, z, and t, whose three derivatives with respect to x, y, and z are zero. How is this function? A function of just t. So omega 1 is a constant function, c1. OK? So let's look for omega 2. Omega 2, just go to the formula. We go to the corresponding formulas in here. And then we replace, in these three equations here, theta 2 by omega 2, x1 by x, x2 by y, x3 by z. We do that, and we obtain something similar to that. dx is 0, so this is 0. Look, the only way to, the, the best way to do that is look which are not 0, for instance. That is x, y, and z, z. So look where x, y is in here, is here. And that could, could be 0, or could not be 0. But since, in that case, is the, this differentiated with respect to z is 0. And this is z appears here. That could be 0 but non-zero, but since it's differentiated with respect to x, is zero. So everything is zero. Okay, that's a faster way to do it. So finally, omega 2 is just a constant 2. Now look for omega, omega 3. Again, we we'll look in the formula for those components which are not zero, x, y, and z, z. x, y, which is that, and z, z, which is that. x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. The derivative of dxy with respect to y, ah, that is not zero. That is not zero because dxy depends on y. We have to differentiate with respect to y. This is, this is just t, t squared e ty. So here is t squared e ty. 
And xy, xy, what is xy? xy is zero, but this is differentiated here with respect to, to x, so it's zero. So look, that equation says that the omega three is a function of x, y, and z, okay? Derivative of omega three with respect to x is zero. What does that mean? Omega three doesn't depend on x. Derivative of omega three with respect to z is zero. What does that mean? Omega three doesn't depend on z. So omega three only dep depend on y. So now I have to solve that function. Find, uh, find an omega three function that depends on y and t, it is like a constant, whose derivative is minus t e squared ty. So it's a primitive, the result of integration integrated with respect to y of that, and that is trivial integration, is minus t e y plus a constant c3 or t. See? So finally, I obtain this solution here. Look that there are three constants here, c1, c2, c3. Now, I can just replace the solution at 1, 1, 1. How is at 1, 1, 1 the solution? The solution would be at 1, 1, 1, that would be C1, omega 1, omega 2 would be C2, and omega 3 would be minus T, E, T to the 1, minus T, E, T, okay? Minus T, E, T. And that is given to be 0, 0 minus t t. So finally, if this from one, from one side has to be 0, 0, that means that c1 is equal to 0. c2 is equal to 0, c2 equal to 0. c3 is minus t t plus c3. Sorry, here uh, uh, c3 is, is, is missing here. Eh? So finally, so that minus, minus t t plus c3 is equal to minus t t, that means that c3 equals zero. So the three constants are zero. So I can cancel the three constants here, okay? Look, it would have happened something. Imagine that here, by some reason, I made a mistake, and instead of integrating here minus t t, minus t t y, I just made a mistake and put here minus two t to y, right? What would have happened here? Minus two t to y, for y equal one, is minus two e t is equal to mi minus t e t plus c3. C3 wouldn't be zero anymore, but would be a function of y, which is a contradiction. So if you find such a contradiction, think that is your fault, you have made a mistake, because otherwise the, the problem wouldn't have any solution. So if in finding that, you find that c t of t is not zero, which in this case comes out because this term cancel with that term. But if for, for some reason there is a two here instead of one, that it wouldn't cancel, and then c3 wouldn't be zero. That doesn't matter. But it would be a function of y, which cannot be, because C3 is a function of T. That would be a contradiction. If you find a contradiction, check the previous work. Or could also be that the uh, compatibility conditions are not fulfilled. So looking at the result that we had, now re replace these equations. And these equations provide the derivative of Bx with respect to x, Bx with respect to y, Bx with respect to z, and here there appear d, d I know, and omega, n omega I know now, okay? So for instance, this, said that, this says that the derivative of bx with respect to x is dxx, dxx is zero. The derivative of bx with respect to y is dxx minus omega three, dxy minus omega three. Dxy is t at y, but omega three is minus t at y, so t at y minus minus, Two t e t y. Okay. Look, I could have made a mistake and forgot this uh, and, uh, and this this minus here. I have to pay a price uh, for it. Let's see. So, finally, the derivative of v x with respect to z is d x z, which is zero, plus omega two, which is zero two, so zero. Finally, 
there is a single <coughs> equation here. Again, that says that Bx doesn't depend on x, doesn't depend on z, so it depends only on y. So uh, Bx can be written as uh, integral, a primitive of this function, which is 2e t y trivial plus a constant. <coughs> C2. V, Vy, we do the same. We just replace, we see just that we have to be concerned just where there are xy, zz, and omegas. xy is that, t to y. Omega 3 is minus t to y. The sum of that is 0. dyy is 0, and dyy minus omega n is 0. Look, the three components are 0, so that means that vi is, the three derivatives are 0, so that means that vi is constant c prime of 2. Look, I call them C prime because they are not the same ones, are different constants. And the third one provides this equation. The little we see with respect to x is dxz. xz is, is 0, no problem. Omega 2 is 0, 0. dyz, dyz is not 0. dyz, uh, sorry, is 0. Is that 1, which is 0. Plus omega 1, omega 1 is 0, so 0. And the third one is just dzz, which is tdz. Okay? So fin finally, I obtain that that's a function that depends only on z, and it's tetz, the primitive of tetz, which is etz plus c prime, or two, three. So the solution is now that one, with three constants, c prime 1, c prime 2, c prime 3. To determine the constants, what do I do? Well, I just look for all the information that has been given to me. I said, it, it has been said that for point 0.111, the velocity is that. So I specify the velocities at point 0.111 and obtain these values. And then I just plus the constants, plus the constants. And then by looking at these equalities, I see that for t equal one, this cancel for that, so c prime 1 is equal to 0. For, t, for x11, this is equal to that, so psi c prime 2 is not 0. And for, t, for z equal 1, these terms cancel with that, so c prime 3 equals 0. So finally, the velocity field is that one, specifying the constants, c1 equals 0, c2 et, is that, c3 etz.